The Lorenz SZ40-SZ42A and SZ42B were German rotor-stream cipher machines used by the German Army during World War II. They were developed by C. Lorenz Ag in Berlin. The model name SZ was derived from Schlüsselzusatz, meaning cipher attachment. The instruments implemented a Vernum stream cipher. British cryptographers, who referred to encrypted German teleprinter traffic as FISH, dubbed the machine and its traffic TUNNY. The SZ machines were inline attachments to standard teleprinters. An experimental link using SZ-40 machines was started in June 1941. The enhanced SZ-42 machines were brought into substantial use from mid-1942 onwards for high-level communications between the German High Command in Wunsdorf close to Berlin, and Army commands throughout occupied Europe. The more advanced SZ-42A came into routine use in February 1943 and the SZ-42B in June 1944. Wireless telegraphy rather than landline circuits was used for this traffic. These non-Morse messages were picked up by Britain's Y stations at Knockholt and Denmark Hill and sent to Government Code and Cipher School at Bletchley Park. Some were deciphered using hand methods before the process was partially automated, first with Robinson machines and then with the Colossus computers. The deciphered Lorenz messages made one of the most significant contributions to British ultra-military intelligence and to Allied victory in Europe. Due to the high-level strategic nature of the information that was gained from Lorenz decrypts, the Vernum cipher, Gilbert Vernon was an AT&T Bell Labs research engineer who, in 1917, invented a cipher system that used the Boolean exclusive OR function, symbolized by. This is represented by the following truth table, where 1 represents true and 0 represents false. Other names for this function are not equal, modulo 2 addition and modulo 2 subtraction. Vernum cipher is a symmetric key algorithm, i.e., the same key is used both to encipher plain text to produce the cipher text and to decipher cipher text to yield the original plain text. Plain text key equals cipher text in cipher text key equals plain text. This produces the essential reciprocity that allows the same machine with the same settings to be used for both enciphering and deciphering. Vernum's idea was to use conventional telegraphy practice with a paper tape of the plain text combined with a paper tape of the key. Each key tape would have been unique but generating and distributing such tapes presented considerable practical difficulties. In the 1920s four men in different countries invented rotor cipher machines to produce a key stream to act instead of a tape. The 1940 Lorenz SZ 4040 seconds was one of these. Structure The logical functioning of the Tunney system was worked out well before the Bletchley Park cryptanalysts saw one of the machines, which only happened in 1945, shortly before the Allied victory in Europe. The SZ machine served as an inline attachment to a standard Lorenz teleprinter. It had a metal base 19 in times 15.5 in and was 17 in high. The teleprinter characters consisted of five data bits, encoded in the International Telegraphy Alphabet No. 2. The enciphering machine generated a pseudorandom character-by-character key that was XORed with the input characters to form the output characters. Each of the five bits of the key for each character was generated by the relevant wheels in two parts of the machine. The Bletchley Park analysts called these the Chi wheels and the Psi wheels. Each wheel had a series of cams around them. These cams could be set in a raised or lowered position. In the raised position they generated a 1, in the lowered position they generated a 0. There were a total of 501 pins on the wheels, giving a theoretical number of ways of setting the pins of 2501 which is approximately 10,151, an astronomically large number. The Chi wheels all moved on one position for each character. The Psi wheels also all moved together, but not after each character. 
Their movement was controlled by the two Mu or motor wheels. The SZ-40 Mu-61 wheel moved one position with each character, but the Mu-37 wheel moved on only when the cam on the Mu-61 wheel was in the active position. If the cam on the Mu-37 wheel was in the active position, all five Psi wheels then moved. The SZ-42A and SZ-42B models had additional complexity to this mechanism, known at Bletchley Park as limitations. The key stream generated by the SZ machines thus had a chi component and a psi component that were combined together with the XOR function. Symbolically, the key that was combined with the plain text for enciphering, or with the cipher text for deciphering, can be represented as follows. Key equals chi key psi key the number of cams on each wheel equaled the number of impulses needed to cause them to complete a full rotation. These numbers are all co-prime with each other, giving the longest possible time before the pattern repeated. This number is the product of the number of positions of the wheels i.e. 43 times 47 times 51 times 53 times 59 times 37 times 61 times 41 times 31 times 29 times 26 times 23 equals 1.6034 times 1019. However, if the five impulses are considered independently, the numbers are much more manageable. The product of the rotation period of any pair of chi wheels gives numbers between 41 times 31 equals 1271 and 26 times 23 equals 598. Operation. Each tunny link had four SZ machines with a transmitting and a receiving teleprinter at each end. For enciphering and deciphering to work, the transmitting and receiving machines had to be set up identically. There were two components to this, setting the patterns of cams on the wheels and rotating the wheels for the start of enciphering a message. The cam settings were changed less frequently before summer 1944. The psi wheel cams were initially only changed quarterly, but later monthly. The chi wheels were changed monthly, but the motor wheel patterns were changed daily. From 1 August 1944, all wheel patterns were changed daily. Initially the wheel settings for a message were sent to the receiving end by means of a 12-letter indicator sent unenciphered, the letters being associated with wheel positions in a book. In October 1942 this was changed to the use of a book of single-use settings in what was known as the QEP book. The last two digits of the QEP book entry were sent for the receiving operator to look up in his copy of the QEP book and set his machine's wheels. Each book contained 100 or more combinations. Once all the combinations in a QEP book had been used it was replaced by a new one. The message settings should never have been reused, but on occasion they were, providing a depth which could be utilized by a cryptanalyst. As was normal telegraphy practice, messages of any length were keyed into a teleprinter with a paper tape perforator. The typical sequence of operations would be that the sending operator would punch up the message, make contact with the receiving operator, use the EIN OS switch on the SZ machine to connect it into the circuit, and then run the tape through the reader. At the receiving end, the operator would similarly connect his SZ machine into the circuit and the output would be printed up on a continuous sticky tape. Because this was the practice, the plain text did not contain the characters for carriage return, line feed, or the null character. Cryptanalysis British cryptographers at Bletchley Park had deduced the operation of the machine by January 1942 without ever having seen a Lorenz machine, a feat made possible by a mistake made by a German operator. Interception tunny traffic was known by Y station operators used to listening to Morse code transmission as new music. Its interception was originally concentrated at the Foreign Office Y station operated by the Metropolitan Police at Denmark Hill in Camberwell, London. But due to lack of resources at this time, it was given a low priority. A new Y station, Knockholt in Kent, 
was later constructed specifically to intercept tunny traffic so that the messages could be efficiently recorded and sent to Bletchley Park. The head of Y Station, Harold Kenworthy, moved to head up Knockholt. He was later promoted to head the Foreign Office Research and Development Establishment. Code breaking on 30 August 1941, a message of some 4,000 characters was transmitted from Athens to Vienna. However, the message was not received correctly at the other end, so the message was retransmitted with the same key settings, a forbidden practice. Moreover, the second time the operator made a number of small alterations to the message, such as using abbreviations, making the second message somewhat shorter. From these two related ciphertexts, known to cryptanalysts as a depth, the veteran cryptanalyst Brigadier John Tiltman in the research section teased out the two plain texts and hence the keystream. Then, after three months of the research section failing to diagnose the machine from the almost 4,000 characters of key, the task was handed to mathematician Bill Tutt. He applied a technique that he had been taught in his cryptographic training, of writing out the key by hand and looking for repetitions. Tut did this with the original teleprinter 5-bit board doc codes, which led him to his initial breakthrough of recognizing a 41-character repetition. Over the following two months up to January 1942, Tut and colleagues worked out the complete logical structure of the cipher machine. This remarkable piece of reverse engineering was later described as one of the greatest intellectual feats of World War II. After this cracking of Tunney, a special team of code breakers was set up under Ralph Tester, most initially transferred from Alan Turing's Hut 8. The team became known as the Testery. It performed the bulk of the subsequent work in breaking Tunney messages but was aided by machines in the complementary section under Max Newman known as the Newman Re. Decryption machines Several complex machines were built by the British to aid the attack on Tunney. The first was the British Tunney. This machine was designed by Bletchley Park, based on the reverse engineering work done by Tiltman's team in the testery to emulate the Lorenz cipher machine. When the pinwheel settings were found by the testery, the Tunney machine was set up and run so that the messages could be printed. A family of machines known as Robinsons were built for the Newman Re. These used two paper tapes, along with logic circuitry, to find the settings of the Chi pinwheels of the Lorenz machine. The Robinsons had major problems keeping the two paper tapes synchronized and were relatively slow, reading only 2,000 characters per second. The most important machine was the Colossus of which 10 were in use by the war's end, the first becoming operational in December 1943. Although not fully programmable, they were far more efficient than the predecessors, representing advances in electronic digital computers. The Colossus computers were developed and built by Tommy Flowers, of the Dollars Hill Post Office Research Station. Some influential figures had doubts about his proposed design for the decryption machine, and Flowers proceeded with the project while largely funding it himself. He was apparently never reimbursed. Like the later ENIAC of 1946, Colossus did not have a stored program, and was programmed through plugboards and jumper cables. It was faster, more reliable and more capable than the Robinsons, so speeding up the process of finding the Lorenz Chi pinwheel settings. Since Colossus generated the putative keys electronically, it only had to read one tape. It did so with an optical reader which, at 5,000 characters per second, was driven much faster than the Robinsons and meant that the tape traveled at almost 30 miles per hour. This, and the clocking of the electronics from the optically read paper tape sprocket holes, completely eliminated the Robinsons' synchronization problems. Bletchley Park management, which had been skeptical of Flower's ability to make a workable device, immediately began pressuring him to construct another. After the end of the war, Colossus machines were dismantled on the orders of Winston Churchill, but GCHQ retained two of them. Testery executives and Tunney codebreakers Ralph Tester, linguist and head of Testery, 
Jerry Roberts, shift leader, linguist and senior code breaker. Peter Erickson, shift leader, linguist and senior code breaker. Victor Masters, shift leader. Dennis Oswald, linguist and senior code breaker. Peter Hilton, code breaker and mathematician. Peter Benenson, code breaker. Peter Edgerly, code breaker. John Christie, code breaker. John Thompson, code breaker. Roy Jenkins, code breaker. Sean Wiley, code breaker. Tom Colville, general manager. By the end of the war, the test tree had grown to nine cryptographers, 24 Austrian shillings girls with a total staff of 118, organized in three shifts working round the clock. Surviving machines. Lorenz cipher machines were built in small numbers, today only a handful survive in museums. In Germany, examples may be seen at the Heinz Nixdorf Museums Forum, a computer museum in Paderborn and the Deutsches Museum, a museum of science and technology in Munich. A Lorenz machine is also displayed at Bletchley Park in the United Kingdom and at the National Cryptologic Museum in the United States.